Hi, this is Adam. Hi, who just joined us? Hi, who just joined us? Hi, Dean Menches with Federal Highway Administration in Illinois. Thank you so much. Uh, Pat Rennie, did you join us? You have been muted. Your microphone has been turned on. Hi everyone, this is Adam Hops at the National Operations Center of Excellence. We're going to get started in a few minutes here as our uh, speakers and presenters are, are joining. Uh, your phone lines will be muted for the first part. Um, but we will uh, open up the phone lines for the roll call uh, a little bit later. Again, it's uh, about three or four minutes till 2 p.m. Eastern. Uh, we'll get started uh, just a little bit after 2 p.m. So hang tight. Thanks so much for joining us. Hi everyone, this is Adam Hops with the National Operations Center of Excellence. We're going to get started here in just a few minutes. Uh, we're waiting for a few of our speakers and presenters to join, and then we'll go ahead and get started. Thanks so much.
Hi everyone, this is Adam Hops with the National Operations Center of Excellence. Again, we're uh, just having uh, folks come in and join us here uh, from speakers and presenters, so we'll get started in just a few minutes. Um, if you would, uh, be sure to take a look at the useful link section uh, up there on the, the right-hand side of your screen. Um, the uh, re re previous uh, all states planning call meetings uh, were there uh, under the NOCO webinar recordings on YouTube area, so you can see uh, past uh, updates and information, along with uh, all the Talking Tim webinars that are done. Um, so take a look there uh, in addition uh, um, to, to all the other resources that are up there. We'll get started in just a moment here. All right, everyone, we're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, my name is Adam Hopps. I'm with the National Operations Center of Excellence. Thanks so much for joining us, uh, and thank you to the Federal Highway Administration and to uh, Chuck Yorks, who's, who's leading this, for allowing us to provide just a little bit of assistance. Uh, before we turn it over uh, to Chuck uh, to get started for the day, uh, just a few ground rules. As always, uh, your phone line will be muted here in the beginning. Uh, we will open it up later for the roll call, so when that happens, uh, do be prepared to, to mute your phone on your end so that we uh, make sure that there's no background noise. So again, uh, you're muted for now, but when we open up the lines later, uh, please be sure to mute on your end. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, there's some links there to, to various uh, information on previous webinar recordings, including all the Talking Tim webinars uh, that are organized by FHWA, uh, as well as other resources uh, there from, from the Center of Excellence. Chuck, I will turn it over to you. Chuck, are you there? Chuck, we're not hearing you. Perhaps you're able to call in? Sorry, folks, Chuck's going to call in so that we can uh, make sure we can hear him loud and clear. So just one moment. Chuck, if you've joined us, go ahead and chime in. All right, everyone. It looks like uh, Chuck's uh, figuring out how to get it to call in. There's a technical difficulty, so we will uh, 
uh, wait for him to join in, until we do the until we do the roll call. So I'll, I'll do my best Chuck impersonation here, and then uh, I'll ask uh, Pat Rooney from Virginia, uh, from Maryland and James Comfort from uh, from Texas to give updates on what they're doing. Uh, so uh, first and foremost, as Chuck says every time, thank you to everybody for being here. Um, this uh, effort every year to honor uh, the work that's being done by the people on our roadside uh, to keep us all safe uh, is is all thanks to to you and all the work, hard work that you do um, uh, in your states and your agencies and your regions uh, to, to make to make this work. So so thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, we are, let's see, a little bit less than uh, three weeks away uh, from uh, from the uh, National Traffic Incident Response Awareness Week. Uh, we've been working, as many of you know, over the past three, four months uh, to share um, during these monthly calls any ideas to, to promote uh, the work that's being done, to promote uh, all the disciplines that are within your region during, during this, this week, and to promote the general uh, public role uh, in Tim's safety. Uh, so all the efforts that we've heard that everybody are going to be doing during this week uh, tend to cover all those three areas, um, and that's the kind of sharing that's, that's been done on these calls. Um, we'll, we'll come back to the roll call of states here, um, and, and once we get Chuck connected uh, to go through that. Um, I'd like to jump before, so before we do that, I'd like to have Pat Rooney uh, talk a little bit about what's going on at Maryland Department of Transportation. Um, uh, to share first, and, and then we'll we'll go over to to, to Jim Comfort, and then then we'll do the roll call. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Pat Bruni from Maryland Department of Transportation. Um, we're I'm just going to give you a little quick slide presentation here to uh, show kind of like our lessons learned um, that we've been going. You know, we, we've had some growing pains over the last few years with this. Um, so. Do I have control of this uh, of the slides, Chuck? Yeah, go ahead and okay, perfect. Good. Um, just kind of a little humor here because of the number of the agencies involved in such, especially when it comes down to the media event. Um, all plans that we're going to show you here are subject to change, and like we've been learning the hard way. Uh, most likely, it's going to be back and forth several times over the next few weeks. Up in, pretty much up to the morning of the uh, media event itself. So take what we're showing you here just as a guide. Um, hopefully, you'd have some luck with it, and uh, you'd be able to see what you're hoping happens actually does come into place and you know falls into place that morning. So um, one of the things that we've had to really get used to is you know our own attitude. Um, when you put something like this together, and I'm sure a lot of you know this, but it's you know, always kind of good to have a little refresher on it, just to you know, you know, smack yourself in the face a couple times or throw some cold water on your face. Uh, you know, we have to approach the event as the facilitator, not as a host. Um, you know, we're we're providing the stage. We're putting this together. We're calling in all of the different law enforcement agencies: fire rescue, EMS, tow trucks, transportation everybody that we can get a hold of to come in and help support the media event especially and to be able to, you know, get the, give the media something to look for. Uh, I don't really come from the PIO side of things, but especially over the last year or the, uh, the last couple of years, um, I learned how important uh, getting the PIOs involved early, and that's really what we've done this year. Um, we got to make sure that all of the classes, the demonstrations, any kind of media events, anything like that, um, the, uh, that's that's what we're doing is just kind of giving them the, the venue to do it in. So too many times we assume that this is our show and we forget to focus on how many disciplines are actually out there that are taking part in these things we're doing. Uh, back in 2016 was the first formalized um, media event that we did. Um, we actually had a new road uh, that's not too far from here, close to BWI. It was a brand new road, had just opened, and we closed it down for a few hours to do our first media event. And uh, it was a big show because we ended up bringing in a tractor trailer, or returned it. We gave the towing and recovery people something big to you know show off their stuff, show off their skills, and show off some of their toys. Um, we had a lot of fire companies 
uh, from around the state, from all the way out from Western Maryland, over on the Eastern Shore, uh, even Delaware. We had some uh, people come down from Pennsylvania and uh, you know, Virginia and DC. Everybody kind of showed up together to put this thing on. It really turned off pretty good, especially for the first time that we did something of that magnitude. Um, 2017, uh, this is where we really started doing uh, sharing uh, the spotlight between the uh, Maryland uh, Transportation Authority and the State Highway Administration, uh, alternating years. And even though we work together on each thing, we kind of like, you know, go back and forth every other year just to uh, let the other one take the, you know, the big star, you know, that, that be the star of the show for it. Um, in 2017, the Transportation Authority had uh, the lead on it. We ended up using the I-95 rest area in Laurel, it's between Baltimore and Washington. And uh, the big thing there, we wanted to try to keep it in between because of our media. Um, you know, so many stations in Washington, if we have it too close to Baltimore, then we don't draw the, the D.C. stations. If we have it too close to D.C., we don't get the Baltimore stations. So when we, uh, the, the, this rest area is directly in between, so it made a, a good venue to have it. And once again, we did a demonstration. Uh, we had a, a truck overturn. We also had a couple of cars crash. Um, to, you know, gives, it gives the media something. They like having that little bit of drama on something like this. So, um, last year, we, uh, it was back in our hands, and um, we were able to use M&T Bank Stadium as the backdrop. And uh, we used one of their big parking lots. One of the things that we mentioned is always plan for the weather. Uh, Mother Nature likes playing games with us once in a while, and last year she was doing the same thing. The good thing about this particular lot that we used at M&T Bank Stadium was that um, Interstate 395 goes over top of the parking lot. So that that morning we knew it was going to rain in the morning, and it was supposed to stop by 10 o'clock, and Mother Nature actually cooperated and stopped by 10 o'clock. Um, a lot of the people that had committed to coming from across the state backed out a little bit because of the, I mean, we had a few of them back out um, in order to, uh, just because of the weather. Uh, we had an overturned tanker at this one. Um, once again, you know, get, giving a little bit of drama to the, uh, you know, for the media to capture. Did a, you know, we did the recovery on it. We really try to, we don't like showing any kind of favoritism by uh, putting any certain tow company in. We had just about every major tow company in the state um, there uh, at this one last year. It really turned out good. We also had the um, the, the uh, uh, ride from the um, American Towman. They had, their convention was in town at uh, the end of the week, and we were able to get them to come in and bring in the casket like you see there. Um, they, they're the, the demonstration that they put on is really spectacular because it doesn't center on just towing and recovery. Uh, that the casket that they have there has law enforcement, it has uh, fire rescue, EMS, uh, you know, as well as the towing and transportation side of things. Uh, we had a large group of uh, the police motorcycles come in with it. We had uh, at least a hundred different fire companies represented. Um, at this, we had, like I said, we had tow companies. We had some tow companies there that I didn't even know existed. They, but the word got out to them, and they all came out for it. So the Spirit Ride was a big draw, I'm sure, um, because as soon as they finished at this event, they took it right down to the convention center, just, just about four blocks away from this, where they were having that on presentation for their uh, convention. Unfortunately, this year we're not going to be able to use them because they're going to be in Atlantic City. So, Sal, if you're on here, you, if you get a chance to grab them for any of the events you're doing, they're going to be in town for you. So um, that's why it was such a, a – I mean, it turned out to be a, a really spectacular event. Um, you know, it was uh, – you know, we, we had a lot of draw for it, and it was very successful. Um, what we've learned, you got to pick a date and stick with it. And, you know, you, it's nice to have some high-profile people. You know, you get some of the elected officials, you know, 
Uh, the first year we tried it, we uh, invited the governor, and we ended up having to change the week uh, several times to try to meet the governor's calendar. And then the day that we settled on, he couldn't make it that day anyway. So, you know, it's just one of those things that we have to, you know, kind of, um, you, you've got to, you know, once you get that date, you got to stick with it, make sure everybody understands it. Uh, plan for the worst case scenario. Uh, you know, just, you know, if, it, if it's supposed to rain, plan on that. Make sure that the, that it's, uh, you know, that you do have a place where you can either move it uh, to a dry spot or just pick something that it doesn't matter whether it rains or not. Um, pick your location based on who you want to attend. Like I said, with us being, you know, we, that we try to go in between Baltimore and Washington because of, you know, the, the big draw. We've actually had at a couple of the events. Last year, for example, we actually had one of the news stations from Philly. We had a news station from over on the eastern shore over around Ocean City and Salisbury area, and we had a, a news station from all the way out in that handles the Hagerstown and Frederick area in Western Maryland. So, uh, you know, if, if you pick a nice centralized location like that, you'll get the people that you're hoping to get. And then uh, don't be afraid to ask responders to travel to an event. You know, so we've had, you know, police, fire, EMS, and all and DOTs from Delaware, Pennsylvania, Virginia, and all. And at the same time that we like having them come to our events, we also try to make ourselves available to go to theirs. So, so far for 2019, what we have planned, we're actually starting it this Saturday. We're helping out with an event from the Towing and Recovery Professionals of Maryland. They're having a slow down move over awareness day. And uh, we're going to help them out with that. We're actually giving them the location to do it. And, uh, you know, we're going to have a couple of our trucks on display. And, you know, it's, it's a big family, the way that they're doing it, they're approaching it as a family event. But it's open to the public, and you know they're doing some publicity on it. October 30th, we're having a train the trainer class for the Sharp Two uh, Tim Responder class, and uh, so far we've gotten Anne Arundel County, uh, you know, Fire Department, Baltimore County Fire Department. We've got a couple of agencies from over on the Eastern Shore that are sending people. So that looks like it's going to be good because we've already put out a challenge to all of the instructors that that week we'd like to see at least one class from each instructor that we have that are, that's still actively teaching uh, the TIM training. November 9th is our official kickoff day. We're starting that with doing a large uh, TIM uh, training session over in Del Mar, which is literally right on the Delaware, Maryland line on the Eastern Shore. Uh, we've done several classes there. They've always been rather large. Uh, it has a neat draw from Maryland and Delaware. Um, as most of you know, Delaware doesn't play around with Tim too much. They have their own uh, training that they prefer to use, um, and so a lot of uh, a lot of their people haven't gotten it. I said, you know, I've, I've probably taught about half of the people that they show as having had the Tim training, and that's mostly been in classes done in Maryland or like the big classes. The ones that we've done at Del Mar usually draw about 100 people. The, the previous three classes that we've had there have been between 75 and 110. So um, it's, it's a pretty good location to do it. Um, we've actually invited Delaware State Police to send people to it this year. So um, we'll, we'll see what that does. Hopefully they're going to get people down to it. And then uh, November 12th, we're doing the media event. We're going to have it right at I-200, which we commonly refer to as the ICC, the Intercounty Connector. Um, it runs between Montgomery County and I-95. It's uh, uh, you know one of those things that's supposed to be a spur to get some of the traffic off. And it's only been open for a few years, but they have a nice location right at the, the east end of the ICC. Um, it's where the Transportation Authority has their, uh, their office for that area. And uh, we're going to be holding the media event there. And we've got the Executive Director from Maryland Transportation Authority, Jim Ports. He's going to be talking at it. Um, the Chief of Police for the uh, Transportation Authority Police is going to be there. We've got some uh, state police, uh, the, the 
commanders from the barracks that handle that area. We're going to have at least one of them talk. Um, we have the captain that's in charge of the traffic division for the Montgomery County Police is going to talk. We're trying to talk to the fire chief for either Prince George's or Montgomery County because we're kind of close to both lines right there. And uh, we, from the towing and recovery uh, professionals in Maryland, we have um, kind of like their lead TIM instructor uh, is going to say a few words. And uh, we're going to have an overturned container uh, recovery demonstration, uh, just bringing in everybody to show what happens with those and a complicated recovery kind of thing to put on a you know, decent show for the media. Um, the Transportation Authority police are going to demonstrate one of their UAVs that they use for reconstruction. And um, they're going to have a lot of displays from various law enforcement, fire rescue, EMS, and DOT, and towing and recovery and all that. Um, November 15th, we're going to be participating in the Federal Highway Media event down in D.C., uh, helping them out. No, we, we, I don't have it on here, and I, we're also going to be attending Virginia's. Um, that same week, so we'll be down there talking, you know, just having a couple of air trucks on display and all. And like I said, we've already started the challenge where we've got the Tim instructors statewide trying to conduct at least one class that week. So, and that's all I have, Joe. Thanks so much. Appreciate everything that Maryland is doing, and Maryland is doing lots of things that other folks are. Um, again, the purpose of these phone calls, um, as Jim Ostrich, uh, who's not able to be with us today, always reminds us, um, it's to share um, for those who are on the call that do not have things planned, or there will be a little bit of a of a twist in something that'll allow you to do um, to make some changes in, in your thinking. Um, Everything's bigger in Texas, they say. Um, Jim Comfort with AECOM um, is going to present a little bit today and talk a little bit about what they've got going on in Texas. Jim, are you there? I am. Thank you, sir. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate the opportunity to speak. Now, on behalf of David McDonald, our uh, statewide coordinator who couldn't be with us today, um, he wanted to uh, express his gratitude to the Federal Highway Administration for all the, the great work that they're doing to help us coordinate these things. In Texas, it is uh, quite a, a large task. From where I am in Fort Worth to uh, El Paso is over 500 miles. So coordinating a statewide program uh, for all responders is a little bit more difficult for us here. So what we've done essentially is we've broken up the state into the major metropolitan areas such as Dallas, Fort Worth, El Paso, Houston, Austin, and uh, San Antonio. And uh, what we try to do is we try to coordinate through David uh, the activities to, uh, uh, in each one of these areas to draw in the first responders and get the appropriate training done. What we've done here in Fort Worth, I'm very fortunate to work with uh, Anthony White. He's the projects coordinator for TxDOT in um, Fort Worth, but I am the Fort Worth TIM coordinator. I'm dedicated strictly to TIM in the Fort Worth area. And what we've done is we encompass nine counties for the Fort Worth TxDOT district, and we go out to uh, the furthest reaches of these counties into very rural areas, and we try to gather the uh, smaller units and the smaller departments, even though they may not have highway uh, access or highways that run through their particular jurisdictions, we want to get them uh, TIM trained as well. So we've created in our uh, Fort Worth district, we've created six different TIM areas, and each one has their own TIM meetings, and they're held bi-monthly. And they've been uh, steadily growing ever since we've done this starting last November to where we've got 40 or 50 people in each one of these uh, area TIM meetings that continue to grow. And uh, what we'd like to do is uh, we're going to expand this program over to, to uh, Dallas at some point and try to get some of the smaller areas around the Dallas area. Uh, Dallas in itself encompasses, uh, I believe, seven to nine counties as well for what they call the district area for TxDOT for Dallas. So it's a coordination of efforts through uh, Mr. McDonald, and uh, he travels throughout 
the uh, state to, and goes to each one of the, the uh, TIM meetings. In every single TIM meeting, we can always pull out some kind of information that's pertinent and helpful to other uh, first responders throughout the state. So we do a lot of uh, webinars in Texas uh, where we try to draw in. If we have a TIM meeting, we try to draw in the San Antonio or maybe the El Paso people and uh, try to get them because they can contribute best practices as well as uh, gaining best practices from uh, our activity as well. In August, we uh, conducted a, uh, in Fort Worth, we conducted an extrication exercise. And what we did was in, in conjunction with a uh, area towing company who donated the area, the land for us to do this, we set up um, an eastbound, westbound highway situation and we were able to get some out-of-service uh, jersey barriers and set up um, essentially an eastbound and westbound highway. And TxDOT came out and they, uh, they made sure that the measurements were proper. We got uh, striping down on the, uh, on the pavement and uh, we set up three or uh, four, excuse me, four separate scenarios. One was an overturned tanker that was on top of a vehicle with a patient. Uh, another one uh, where a uh, a vehicle have run up underneath the back of a tractor trailer. And then very common in our area out here in the rural areas is a vehicle that flips off uh, a small bridge and goes over an embankment and down a hill. And so we were very, very fortunate. We had a lot of uh, fire police, EMS, and towing companies. We had the courtesy patrol come out. And what we did is we actually coordinated it as if it was a real-time scenario. So we kept times and we kept records of uh, each day. We did this for four days. And we did each scenario of each day so that different departments could actually get in and do the hands-on. Say, for instance, fire departments could do the uh, extrication and actual cutting on the cars. We had towers that came in and they used their heavy, heavy records to lift uh, the different uh, tractor trailers, the different tankers. And uh, it was a real eye-opener for first responders to see that towing and recovery is not just to get traffic all, or get the uh, crashed automobiles off the road once we're finished tearing them up. So they were able to see how these heavy wreckers could actually lift and, be, and uh, provide more stabilization as fire departments and EMS did their uh, patient extrication. So it, was, it, it, it really contributed to uh, interoperability throughout the uh, throughout our district. Uh, we have several things that are planned going on for this uh, for November 10th through the 16th in Plano. The North Texas Toll Authority on November 6th is going to, at their Safety Operations Center, is going to do push-pull drag training for Safety Patrol Hero and Courtesy Patrol uh, members. They're going to talk about uh, new methods and uh, best practices for tire changing, for worker safety. They're going to go over tools and equipment. Again, we're all about exchanging best practices. In uh, Texas, it's very easy to have uh, one area in North Texas in the uh, Fort Worth, Dallas-Fort Worth region to have certain tools or certain techniques that people in El Paso haven't even, haven't even uh, seen or heard of. So it's very important that we do these kind of trainings to exchange these best practices. And uh, they will also have the media presence. They're going to do theirs on November 6th, but that gives the uh, media people a chance to uh, put it together, edit it, evaluate it, and then find an appropriate slot the following week. Uh, they, it was at their behest that we did this so that they have time to prepare. Instead of being having to throw something together, they can really put something together for us for that following week. In uh, Fort Worth, that, uh, that NTTA was in uh, Plano, right, uh, right around the Dallas area. But in Fort Worth, we're going to have a high-tension cable barrier training. And uh, myself, David McDonald, and Anthony White went to Gibraltar. And I'm sure anybody else could do this as well. And we asked them for some training. And they actually made us train, uh, train the trainers so that we could train other people in, cable, in, in extrication for the cable barrier system. They are uh, gracious enough to provide uh, classroom material, videos, uh, anything that they would use to train, they, uh, they gave to us. So we are going to set up 
100 feet cable barrier, and we are going to put some uh, cars and some vehicles into this cable barrier, and then show uh, first responders how to extricate these vehicles without cutting the wire. And in most cases, you can even do it without knocking over the uh, the turnbuckles. So there's several techniques for doing this. We, unfortunately, at our uh, traffic management center get calls all the time for people that want to cut that wire first thing. So and that wire can be under anywhere from 8,000 to 10,000 pounds of pressure. So we uh, obviously don't want them cutting that. So we're going to show them how to extricate these people and make it much, much safer. Uh, we're going to have an hour classroom followed by hands-on extrication. And we're going to probably uh, do a minor extrication and then later after that a more complicated uh, extrication where the vehicle is actually entangled in the wire. So that's what we're doing in, in uh, Fort Worth. We're also going to be doing, uh, we're going to be distributing uh, flyers advertising our uh, traffic management center phone numbers and uh, services that are available to the first responders that TechDot can come out and help. We're really trying to push the fact that TechDot is a resource for our first responder agencies to use when these uh, situations come up. You know, we're not just there to, um, you know, to come out and repair when it's over. We can help to uh, direct traffic and, and uh, do many other things that they, they may need us for. So that's one of the big pushes that we're trying to do. In Austin, in November 12th through the 14th, they're doing a three-day mock exercise training similar to what Fort Worth had done. And it is sponsored by the Austin Fire Department at their training center. They're going to have several scenarios. They're going to have a commercial vehicle rollover involving the passenger vehicles with entanglement. Excuse me. Uh, commercial vehicle rollover with a hazmat and also with spilled cargo. Police, fire, EMS, text, dot towing, hazmat. Um, they also include uh, TMC and uh, communications and the hero uh, to uh, – participate in these. And so one thing that we're trying to focus on as well is that uh, communications in the dispatchers and our traffic management centers are vitally important to our TIM programs, and a lot of times they are the most overlooked people. So we're going to try to get those people more involved in our, in our TIM training. Um, we're doing a social media campaign statewide to uh, Mr. McDonald. He's going to be highlighting recent first responder struck buys in Texas. Uh, we're going to focus on state laws to protect responders and the highlights for the Austin training. Um, for the Austin training as well, they're going to have some uh, media coverage uh, so that we can uh, further the, uh, the public's awareness of TIM and uh, specific TIM training. Uh, we're also going to do uh, PIO push cards uh, from TechDOT that responders will be passing out to uh, the motoring public for the move over and slow down laws that are in uh, that are taking place, many people aren't even aware in Texas that those uh, laws exist. Much less of uh, what the, to what they pertain, and the, and uh, that they that they do pertain to towers and uh, other vehicles outside of fire and emergency vehicles. Uh, these are the things that uh, Mr. McDonald had asked me to cover. Uh, I'll answer any questions anybody may have, but that's all we have from Texas. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot, Jim. Appreciate everything that's being done and, and your sharing. Um, the growth in traffic incident management in Texas, um, Dave McDonald won't say it's directly related to having the statewide coordinator on board, um, but sometimes all it takes is, is one clearinghouse um, to pull those things together. So. Appreciate everything that's being done by Anthony and Dave and the whole team um, at AECOM that's supporting them. Uh, appreciate it very much. Thank you very much, sir. Thanks, Jim. Adam, I do not see a roll call slide. Is that possible? Oh, thank you. I appreciate it very much. Um, again, uh, speak to um, anything you'd like to share. Um, all the past recordings, again, on the YouTube channel with National Operations Center of Excellence are available. And again, this is being recorded and will be made available 
um, later. But let's get going with uh, with our states. Um, anyone on from Alabama to share today? Alaska. Anything new from Arizona? Arkansas. California. We're on a bad roll. How about Colorado? Save me, Connecticut. Can anyone hear me? Well, I'm clear. Yeah. Anything from Connecticut? Delaware. Florida. Hi, yeah, it's Mary Lou with the Turnpike. Uh, we're on. Um, I can update you on a couple things that we're doing. We, of course, we have our traditional, you know, social media campaign that we'll be doing for the week. Uh, DMS messages, displays in our service plazas. But we also just confirmed yesterday a media event for November 14th. So similar to what the uh, two states were talking about with, uh, you know, demonstrations, we are going to do our own incident response and responder safety demonstration, a full media event. We've got a uh, partnership with FHP, with two of our local fire rescues, Sunshine State Towing Association, our road rangers, and then, of course, our internal staff. Um, still working on the full scene uh, details, but it looks like it's going to be a large bus and a single uh, car. And basically just have all the responders roll in like they would for a real event. Um, doing it at our tandem truck lot on, you know, along one of our roadways. So like I said, details are still little, a little fresh but um, that is planned for the 14th. Thanks a lot, Mary Lou. Yep. Anything from Georgia today? Hawaii? Can you hear? Can you hear me? Oh, yep. Well, this is Connecticut this is call, and I tried. I, I was on the webinar, and it you couldn't hear me when I was on. I had to get off the computer in there. But um, Connecticut, we recently had a, a, the Greater Hartford TIM meeting. Terry Thompson was hosting that. And our Federal Highway Administrator, uh, Amy Jackson Grove, announced that she's going to try to bring TIM up in a couple of uh, meetings that she has with some of the commissioners from the key agencies, uh, DOT, uh, Public Safety, uh, DEEP, and Consumer Protection. So we're very pleased that we may – you know, have a, a door into some of the top-down leadership. As for a formal event at this time, we're still looking for state police to hold the hold the key on that. Hopefully, do a demonstration that week. But uh, nothing is uh, solid at this time. So, but that's it from Connecticut. I apologize, I couldn't get in. I understand, Paul. I had the same problem early on. Um, but again, we continue to, to grow and evolve whatever we can do in every state. I'm glad FHWA is getting involved and, and wish you the best there. Yeah, I was very pleased with that. Okay. All right. Anybody from Georgia? At this point, we're assuming everybody's got a phone problem that they need to get out and get back on. How about Hawaii? Idaho. Illinois. I went from Indiana. Iowa.
Kansas, Kentucky, Louisiana, Maine, We heard a little bit from Maryland, um, Massachusetts, Michigan. Hi, this is Dawn Miller from Michigan. We are working on, good afternoon. We are working on plans for our press conference being held on the west side of the state this year in the Grand Rapids area. We are going to have that on Tuesday, November 12th at the Wyoming Fire Department, which is southwest of Grand Rapids. We are going to have emergency vehicles on display and also a TIM demonstration in their back uh, parking lot training area. Right now, the fire department has temporarily mounted GoPros on their truck-mounted attenuators that they respond on scenes. They call that Vehicle Utility 2. It's an attenuator mounted behind a former DPW dump truck that responds as a blocking vehicle, and they have the GoPro mounted on the, the Utility 2 vehicle, and it's going to be collecting video that we can replay at the press conference showing what it's like to be a responder with vehicles not moving over or not slowing down when they're responding at an incident. We're also going to have a tabletop demonstration set up during our press conference. And we're also going to have speakers from Grand Rapids Fire Department, Michigan State Police, the Michigan Towing Association, also Michigan DOT. They're going to be each speaking about reinforcing the message of the move over law. And also we have so far three TIM trainings scheduled. Two are in southeast Michigan, and one will be held the afternoon of the press conference in the Grand Rapids area. And also, we are currently working on a draft of a statewide press release that will be blasted out to AAA and MDOT Communications on Facebook and Twitter. And also, we'll have messages on our dynamic message boards during that week also. That all done. That's awesome. That's awesome. I love the way plans come together. Um, real hopeful that you're moved to to the western side is going to really work out for you. There's some great Yeah, it should, it should be a very good press conference. We're excited. Terrific. Thanks. You're welcome. Minnesota. Mississippi. Anything new with Missouri? Montana, Nebraska, Nevada, New Hampshire, New Jersey, New Mexico. New York, North Carolina. Yes, sir. It's Sergeant Christman with the North Carolina State Highway Patrol here. Uh, we partnered up with someone from South Carolina to start an instructor-led virtual training pilot program uh, to get more interactive with the training side of it, to be able to go to different locations and not be in just one stagnant location to also include people from the emergency management service as well as the fire service, record service, uh, trying to reach out to branch out to other agencies other than just law enforcement. Sounds good, sorry. That's good, sorry. Yes, sir. Anything else from North Carolina? How about North Dakota? O-H-I-O. Oklahoma, Oregon,
Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. Rhode Island. By joining <coughs> South Carolina today. South Dakota. Tennessee. Hello, Chuck. This is Gary Ogletree. Hi, buddy. Uh, we're going to get a bit of a jump on the, the uh, Tim Week. We're, uh, I wanted to invite everybody to our uh, annual Safety and Operations Conference November 4th through the 6th in Franklin, Tennessee. Uh, there will be some Tim discussions there, and we'll have a display of probably four or five mobile command posts slash command centers uh, outside on display on the 5th. Uh, as far as the uh, Tim Week itself, uh, Ray Halavant's got us some uh, dynamic uh, message board signs worked up for the overheads uh, statewide. Um, John Hall's working with some Twitter messaging. We're working with our PIOs to get uh, public service announcements and social media working on that. Uh, Mid-November, we've got two hot Tim trainings uh, scheduled, hot for hands-on training at the TIM training track at the THP Academy. Uh, that's uh, kind of geared at some of our TDOT folks to train them to, to uh, decide that it's all right to do a, you know, a few thousand dollars worth of damage to a vehicle to get it out of our road, those kind of things. Um, let's see, and we've got a new printing of our steer it clear it flyers coming out. That's about it. Terrific. Do you need any guest instructors for your training there mid-November? You are welcome to show up. We'll put you to work somewhere. Thanks, brother. <laughs> Appreciate it. Thanks for what you guys do. And Ray Halliband, if you're still on there, thanks for what you're doing. Eric from Texas. How about Utah? Vermont. Virginia. Once again, the big open house in Northern Virginia is coming up, I believe, uh, a week from this Saturday. Washington. West Virginia. Anything new from Wisconsin? Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, in support of Awareness Week, we've been doing a big outreach uh, uh, campaign for uh, Move Over Day, which is uh, this Saturday the 19th. So we've uh, sent out uh, uh, announcements about Move Over Day and requesting uh, uh, participation from the entire responder community, all 8,500 people on our time distribution list, uh, Wisconsin Chiefs of Police, uh, Wisconsin State Firefighters Association. We sort of threw out a big blanket out there, and uh, people have been throwing or sending our, uh, our notes or their pictures and uh, with their family members and... Uh, already sending us what they're going to be posting on Saturday, which is fantastic. Uh, in addition, we also requested photos of uh, uh, crashed or wrecked responder vehicles that we are going to uh, put on our social uh, media sites. Uh, all it's, It started today, but it's going to run, uh, uh, especially on Saturday, where different vehicles, it's almost just going to scroll through and uh, with a message like, if you don't move over, there's deadly consequences. Um, and then uh, for the uh, response week, we're definitely going to be doing uh, a media event every day, uh, some type of uh, a media event. Last year we had the uh, uh, Department of uh, Transportation Secretary go across the five regions. That, that we're not going to do something that uh, large, but uh, just probably via Twitter. Um, we're going to support the uh, entire week with DMS boards targeting the specific disciplines. You know, move over for tow trucks, move over for fire engines, stuff like that. And uh, that's about it. But I, I'm looking forward to this move over day. Uh, we're getting a lot of support, and uh, it should be pretty nice blitz. And then we're going to dovetail that into the responder week. And I just got to say uh, uh, to our friends to the east in Michigan, how about them Packers? And that's all I have. David, that was out of place, I think. <laughs> I love it. Most
many of us loved it, but um, <laughs> I just, yep. uh, for those uh, not following football, uh, the Packers came back on the Lions last night. So Wisconsin last night, their pro football team was better than the one from Detroit. Um, uh, how about Wyoming? Anyone with us from Puerto Rico today? DC? Any other interested parties with anything to share? If not, um, we remind you that uh, we're always looking for additional content. Um, I was asked to uh, let everyone know that, as you can see, um, my email is cyorks at gfnet.com. Um, anything you've got to share, we appreciate it so that we can continue to build um, some kind of a permanent record. Uh, I will report that a couple times, a couple of these calls you've heard about a tunnel exercise in Pittsburgh, and uh, we had an extremely successful uh, interaction between um, tunnel folks and the Pittsburgh Bureau of Fire. Um, we closed a, a significant tunnel, uh, tube in one direction um, completely, and one lane of two in the other direction for about 16 hours um, two weekends ago and got tremendous media attention. Um, we had TV stations show up at 10 p.m. for the first exercise and come back in the morning for the last one at 8 a.m. Um, so got an awful lot of, of good publicity from a public standpoint, um, but more importantly, the responders and the tunnel folks who, who uh, work with them um, have a better idea of how they can continue to improve that situation. Um, we're going to go for one last call. It wasn't scheduled uh, in the past, but I'll be working with Jim Ostrich and Adam Hops, and we're going to have one more opportunity um, for states to share or listen, um, probably right around the end of the month. We may be going for Halloween. Um, so I appreciate your time. Uh, appreciate, again, the support of the National Operations Center of Excellence and Mr. Adam Hops. And uh, on behalf of Jim Ostrich, who is sorry he couldn't be with you. Um, he looks forward to talking more at the end of the month about the national event that will be held at DOT headquarters in D.C. And with that, I think we'll be done for now. Again, look for opportunity to uh, reach back and listen to uh, the states who reported today. And we thank you all for your time and for what you do. Please be safe.